My name is Earl Blumenauer, and I represent the Portland Metropolitan Area in Congress. I was uh, privileged to be in uh, one of the most exciting sessions in Oregon history in 1973 as a very young legislator. One of the areas that uh, was actually very significant, uh, did not get a lot of attention at the time because there was so much going on, was the evolution of how we're going to deal with policies regarding drug and alcohol. And part of this uh, evolution of drug and alcohol policy dealt with marijuana. Uh, Oregon had a very spirited debate in the latter stages of that 1973 session. Uh, that was uh, the first state that produced legislation that decriminalized marijuana. Uh, having gone through the facts surrounding it, looking at policy limitations and equities, uh, it was a relatively easy decision for the legislature to come to that Oregon would take this first historic step. As part of this, there was a very spirited debate about whether or not you should legalize adult use of cannabis. Um, I think that may have been the first state vote anywhere in the country. And I was privileged to be a part of that. At that time, it seemed to me that a policy of prohibition really didn't make sense, that there were substances that were much more dangerous and addictive that were widely available, and yet we were prohibiting uh, the use of cannabis. It made no sense at that time. History has shown that the policy of prohibition has failed miserably, but it was that sort of landmark debate that helped capture my interest and helped me frame the conclusion that we needed to do this much differently and prohibition was not the approach going forward that Oregon should have. Our early work, uh, frankly, did not deal at all with the therapeutic aspects of cannabis. Um, it's kind of ironic because um, it's been uh, used for thousands of years for medicinal purposes. Um, but that uh, later uh, inclusion into the policy discussion came uh, driven primarily by citizen cannabis activists. It was the California initiative that successfully passed in 1996, followed by Oregon, uh, where that um, evolved into a much uh, more important aspect of the debate. Uh, it brought a number of people around to look at the policies in a much broader sense, and it has built momentum nationally for a critical reappraisal of the policies surrounding cannabis. I didn't have much exposure to a marijuana culture, although there uh, I'm sure was widespread use at the college I attended. Um, I actually never encountered anybody using it. Um, uh, and the discussion about the therapeutic uh, properties just wasn't on the radar screen. But over the course of the last 25 years, I've had an opportunity to encounter people for whom uh, their use of medical marijuana was a lifeline. Uh, the stories uh, about what difference it made for family members. I mean, it's common knowledge now that use of medical marijuana to suppress uh, the violent nausea that accompanies chemotherapy is uh, something that uh, most people I know accept as uh, a valid approach. And I think increasingly people generally, regardless of their feeling about the use of cannabis uh, for adult use, I think they would uh, absolutely uh, consider uh, using it under those circumstances. And as time progresses, we're finding more and more applications. The difference that it's made for returning veterans uh, with um, injuries uh, visible and, uh, and those, who, those which were, were not visible, who used 
cannabis to manage the symptoms. It's all been part of a pattern uh, to find more aspects of uh, the use of cannabis, uh, particularly medical marijuana, um, and broadening the conversation. And it's another reason why our hopeless policy of prohibiting robust research into cannabis um, is uh, so nonsensical uh, and destructive. I've had an opportunity to work with people in each state uh, that has uh, decided to uh, legalize adult use, um, have spent a lot of time with advocates, uh, think tanks. Uh, I think Oregon uh, stands out uh, for a couple of reasons. One, we were a pioneer. We, we have been involved uh, in uh, pushing the parameters of marijuana policy uh, for 43 years. Oregon has, uh, I think, undertaken the legalization of adult use in a very systematic and thoughtful fashion. I think the initiative that we approved in 2014 is the best of any of the state proposals that were considered anywhere. In part, that's because we had the experience uh, to draw on from other states, looking at what was going on in Washington and Colorado at the time, uh, but also because we've, we have a, a robust group of advocates. Um, and we entered this space at a time when the wave is cresting, where this is taking place all across the country, um, where there's an understanding that there's, there's almost 20 million people a month who use cannabis in some form for some purpose, uh, where we now have two-thirds of the population that have access to some aspect of medical marijuana. Um, so we're kind of in this sweet spot. All these things are going on. Oregon had been a pioneer in pushing the policy parameters. And we've got a lot of people in this state that care about it, who've invested time and energy, um, who are strong advocates, um, all sort of coming together at the same time. I would like to think that Oregon could play a larger role with cannabis research, in part uh, because of the, the medical applications, in part because we have uh, a fascinating research infrastructure. Uh, we have very strong neuroscience programs at OHSU. Uh, Oregon State University is one of the preeminent agricultural research institutions in the country. Um, all of this, I think, uh, bodes well for us because we have an emerging industry. Um, we have ideal growing conditions in Oregon. We've got some people who've been working in this field for decades. By encouraging the federal government to have a more realistic attitude regarding research, I think we're in a position to answer some of the lingering questions, to be able to deal with product standardization, being able to understand what works and what doesn't. I mean, it's, it's really kind of remarkable. After having used marijuana for medicinal purposes for thousands of years, that we really cannot carefully define what is going on. We don't, it, not in the same way that we have, for example, in other pharmaceutical research. You don't get a specific prescription for a specific application. Uh, that needs to change. We need to do a better job of understanding the dynamic. We need to make sure that there are no lingering doubts about cannabis, its effects, the dangers and benefits. I mean, why are we still having people clash over some of the most fundamental of questions? There's no reason for that. And if we're able to have Oregon play a role in providing those answers, helping peace of mind, helping in terms of health and safety, and developing an industry uh, that is 
well-regulated, that people know what they're getting, uh, that we're able to have a good test, for instance, for impairment. Uh, all of these are possible. All of these are important. And I think that will help resolve some of the conflicts that we have unnecessarily. There are some that have been involved with cannabis for decades, sort of on the uh, and sort of shadow land. Uh, there are others that have been working, for example, in, in legal medical marijuana and fashioning businesses. Uh, of late, we have seen an explosion of interest in cannabis as a growing industry. Um, and all of the people who want to be a part of it. And it's not just people who grow or who use marijuana. I mean, the people that's dealing with real estate questions, research, um, financial assistance, equipment, I mean, the, the testing, I mean, the, the wide array of activities that would be involved with any emerging industry um, has, been, has been remarkable. Uh, there are some incredibly sophisticated people who've uh, come to the party. Uh, there are some, some who have been attracted to Oregon because they think that uh, Oregon is doing it right and there's an opportunity for them to be successful. Uh, there are some who are uh, true believers and zealots who, uh, for whom this is vindication of, of what they have felt. Uh, for a long time. I'm pleased that there are a number of folks that have pledged, uh, and a number of them use the same term. They want to provide the gold standard. They want to have the highest environmental standards, quality of product. Uh, they want to be energy efficient, uh, how you deal with water, uh, deal with potential contaminants that might be involved in, in cultivation, how they treat their employees and their customers. Um, there's, uh, there's a remarkable number of people for whom this is not just uh, another business undertaking. Uh, it, it's something that they're making a commitment that they want to do right and they think has a tremendous possibility and that they're in on the ground floor. Well, on one level, I wonder, as I, as I reflect back on, on what's happened in, in more than four decades, Part of me questions, why did it take so long to get to this spot? President Nixon had a high-level blue ribbon commission that advised him <laughs> that criminalization was not the approach that should be taken. That was part of the discussion I had in my freshman year in the state legislature in 1973. This was, this was not something that was uh, hotly contested. And there was a consensus that was emerging about what worked and what didn't, what the harms would be versus uh, the benefits. It, it is really remarkable that we went into like a 20-year slide with the war on drugs, uh, how politicized it became, and how many lives were damaged or destroyed uh, as collateral damage uh, to this failed policy of prohibition. On the other hand, I am pleased that the pieces are coming together. I am actually quite surprised at how quickly this is going mainstream. I recently in Portland had two back-to-back -back dinners with very prominent people in the community uh, where this just came up in conversation where in both cases people had been involved with using medical marijuana that they volunteered. That, that wouldn't have happened 30 years ago, wouldn't have happened 30 months ago, I don't think. But just how casual the reference uh, and, and the acceptance this is, for me, a remarkable opportunity here in Oregon to pull the pieces together, to be able to build on the successful 
ballot measure and the thousands of people who are committed to doing it right to be able to make something that has been a source of conflict, of racial injustice in the criminal justice system. Uh, I mean, we still, last year, when a majority of the American public thought that use of cannabis should be legal by adults, we still cited or arrested over 600,000 people. Astounding. But it is encouraging for me to see the wave cresting, to see other states stepping forward as on, a, on ballot initiatives, even maybe a state, possibly two, that look at legalizing it through the legislative process, which has never happened, um, watching the administration sort of slowly move in the right direction, um, and watching more and more people in the political space. Actually, the, the political space has been the last to adapt because the public has been there. Voters have forced these changes. It wasn't politicians. It's been kind of a um, small circle of politicians that are, have been speaking out on this. Um, but it's all coming together now, and I think this may be the most consequential year yet. It, it hasn't felt uh, uncomfortable for me to provide leadership for this issue because I think the merits were very strong. And interestingly, the people I represent over the years have tended to be supportive of it, even if it wasn't the majority position of the public. Um, most people did not feel comfortable with the existing policies. They weren't quite sure maybe what it should be, but they didn't think uh, that uh, prohibition was the way to go. And I suppose because I have been sort of clear about my position forever, uh, as long as I've been an elected official, people kind of, that came with a package. You know, that was who I was, what I believed in, and let the sort of the chips fall where it may. What's happened the last couple years has been interesting because more and more people in the political space are being open to reform. More and more people are looking, even if they're not quite in favor of full legalization, uh, they understand that aspects of these policies are absolutely toxic. The notion of forcing marijuana to be an all-cash business is insane. I've been working on this issue for decades. I have never met a single person who felt that marijuana should be an all-cash business. Nobody. Um, the notion that they should be taxed in a punitive way, that they shouldn't uh, legal state legal marijuana businesses shouldn't be able to deduct all their legitimate business expenses, mm, that, that doesn't strike people as fair. The research prohibition, people who strongly oppose marijuana support what we're trying to do to open up the research. So I have I've felt comfortable based on what I've said, what I know, uh, the feedback I've received from, from my constituents. And I'm excited that more and more people in the political space, elected officials are being receptive for some, if not all, of this broader agenda. Well, it's, it's interesting to speculate what, what should be the ultimate position of cannabis policy and utilization. I think that we should have, particularly as it relates with medical applications, we should be much more open and welcoming. Um, my vision is that uh, it would be easier for people to use and people, we do better research and product development so people know exactly what they're using. Um, because I think that that is one of the keys to stopping the epidemic of opioid uh, 
prescription drug abuse and deaths. I mean, more people die from abuse of prescription drugs than all of the illegal drugs combined. And this is also connected to the heroin overdose epidemic. People are self-medicating and they get hooked um, and it is a brutal trap that they fall in. If there was better application of medical marijuana, I think we can deal with people's chronic pain, anxiety, uh, in a way that is less toxic um, and more effective, and certainly less addictive. For Oregon, I think we can be a leader in product development, how it's managed, and these boundaries and everything from hemp to cannabis products. Nationally, I want the, the United States to stop this failed destructive war against cannabis. It serves no purpose. It's extraordinarily costly, destructive, and unfair. I think we're on the verge of the country making this change. And indeed, much of it is already happening, but not with the federal formal policy changes that we need. Internationally, it's exciting watching various countries wrestling with the same questions we are. Um, I'm going to be part of the conversation at the United Nations, and I've had conversations with people from other countries. Um, the more that we can harmonize this approach internationally, we can stop the flow of money to drug cartels, and not, not just in Mexico, thank you very much, for their nefarious and destructive activities. We can stop wasting money on a failed policy of prohibition. We can actually have government make money that can be used uh, on taxes, just like we do with alcohol and tobacco, that can fund socially important positive things, particularly drug treatment, education, law enforcement, and stop wasting the money uh, on the prohibition activities. Um, I think uh, the world will be a better place if we get our cannabis policies right. Oregon can be a leader. The United States is about to turn a page, and we have an opportunity internationally to finally get this right.